the entrance antiphon. Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. So we're finally here again on this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And Holy Mass is offered for the intentions of the people of our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, yes. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Rejoice, heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. See now, your king comes to you. He is victorious. He is triumphant, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will banish chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be banished. He will proclaim peace for the nations. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. 
I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Your interests are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possessed the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, and then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. So then, my brothers, there is no necessity for us to obey our unspiritual selves or to live unspiritual lives. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if by the Spirit you put an end to the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to be by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> well, it's good to see you all, obviously. And I would say that the one thing that has kept me sane over these past hundred days, and I'm sure it's true for every one of you here, is friendship. Friendship with Jesus and with others. Certainly I felt hugely supported by my personal friends and by the members of the parish family. It's been a truly bearing one another's burdens. And our Lord Jesus Christ came amongst us on earth to lighten our burdens by taking them on himself. This is the essence of the gospel that we've just heard, those explicit words of Jesus. And the burdens of life that we experience, the ups and the downs of life, they come in all sorts of different ways from 
physical disability to moral weaknesses, family and relational problems, to financial and professional ones. But what we do not believe about any of these burdens of life is that God somehow sends us trials and burdens to kind of bring us down. That's not the kind of God that we believe in. What we do believe is that although God did not create evil, he allows evil and bad to exist, like pandemics, to bring us to a complete dependence on him. This is the root of the problem of evil in the world. Now sometimes, of course, we do make burdens for ourselves when we deflect life and our destiny away from God and from his purposes, when we use science and technology and material things as solutions and as alternatives to the cross and to virtue, then emptiness and human misery invariably follows. And of course, we know today that we're faced with multiple and complex situations which have never existed before. And we're facing challenges every day, right now. And we're not alone if we feel somewhat confused. Whatever the dilemmas that we are faced with, we know that somehow our faith will help us to make sense of the jungle that is life. Because the burdens that Jesus offers are those of truth and faithfulness, which are not burdens at all because, paradoxically, they're allowed by God, who wants to liberate us from the tyranny of becoming slaves to the world, slaves to the times in which we live, and slaves to a philosophy of life that has nothing to do with the easy yoke and the light burden that friendship with Jesus Christ offers us in contrast. So our daily thoughts should be, our daily questions should be, is Christ commanding my life in every detail? Is he the Lord of my family life? Is my family under his guidance? My recreational life, my professional life, are they under the Lordship of Christ? Is Jesus Lord of every room in my house? Even my most private life is not my prerogative. It belongs to him. Do my friendships serve his purpose? Am I totally given over to his lordship? It sounds oppressive, but remember, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What makes life burdensome is ordering our lives to the way of the world. What makes our lives light is ordering our ways to those of Christ the King. The hearts of Jesus and Mary are symbols of the love of God, not just saccharine caricatures that we can't relate to, but hearts which represent a loving reaching out to each and every member of the family of God. They're about friendship, intimacy, and relationship, which is at the very heart of our religion. If we can go to their hearts, the hearts of Jesus and Mary, then we will find there that sure refuge and strength from all of the burdens that life can present. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. This one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pray, brother, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, 
O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Well, I'm sure we could all say and echo at least the words of the disciples at the moment of the Transfiguration. It is good, Lord, for us to be here. Well, as you can see, I'm no longer just a load of pixels on a screen. I do actually exist in reality, um, because most of you I know have only been seeing the mass on the live stream, so it's good to be back with you. And to get back to some sort of partial normality, um, if we're going to continue with the masses and, and keeping the church open, albeit on a, a reduced scale, then we need more volunteers for stewarding and helping at the masses and during the week. So please sign up on the website for the masses daily and for stewing, stewarding the church when it's opened. Um, we can only keep the church open and have public worship if there are sufficient volunteers. And I do want to thank those of you who have signed up and given so much time generously over the last three weeks, but we do continue and will continue to need your help through this time. Please follow the weekly events on the parish website and on social media. Um, it's best if you subscribe to the electronic newsletter, which will keep you informed of any events or any changes. If there's someone that you know who doesn't have internet access, then you might please look out for them and offer your help to them. Your weekly offerings to the parish, if you have any, can be placed in the baskets at the back of the church as you leave Mass. And I do thank you for your continued generosity and financial support of the parish during this time. I can't be at the back of the church at the end of the Masses this weekend, but if you need anything, anything I can provide, then please uh, do email me or call me if I can help in some way. So thank you all very much and a very blessed Sunday and weekend to you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.